So the long-teased new Ghost in the Shell anime being made in collaboration with Netflix has finally gotten a proper reveal in a new teaser trailer, and a lot of people don't seem all that happy with it. But I'm not entirely sure why. I could understand thinking it wasn't perfect or ideal, but there's nothing about this trailer that I think makes this look like an unpromising entry in the franchise, and I'm gonna try to break down why. Just for the sake of cred check and promotion, I have talked about literally every entry in the entire franchise extensively in videos linked below, and previously shared in what I thought was the justified rage towards the live-action ScarJo film. Going by the negative comments which I've seen, the chief complaint seemed to boil down to 1. It's in CG, some argue outdated looking CG, 2. It looks like a video game, and 3. Motoko looks younger and softer than she should. While I don't necessarily disagree with that third point, I definitely can't see how Ghost in the Shell being in CG would possibly be a problem. CG has been a part of the visual lexicon of the franchise all the way since the second volume of the original manga. It also comes up abundantly in the film sequel, is all over Standalone Complex and Arise, and obviously was the style of all the Ghost in the Shell video games. I would argue that in fact many entries in the franchise feature the best integration of 3D and 2D animation that exists in anime, and that it's always pushed CG into new and interesting realms, which fits the show thematically very well, considering it's a cyberpunk show with a well-fleshed-out internet universe and centered entirely around cutting-edge technology of its near-future era. To say that a CG anime looks like a video game is, to me, a huge compliment. Video games generally look very, very good, especially when they do full CG cutscenes. One of the biggest problems I have with most CG anime is how they try to imitate the animation style and frame rate of traditional animation to jarring effect, instead of utilizing the medium of CG to the fullest. My good friend Tom Oliver had a great video explaining this issue in more depth. If anything, I would prefer for CG anime to take more cues from video games, which are really leading the charge on using CG in inventive ways. Does the CG look outdated? I honestly can't figure out why this belief is held at all. I guess I would ask, what is considered to be missing here? I mean, sure, it doesn't look like a movie, but it's not a movie. The depth of color in the Major's hair, eyes, and makeup is probably the most striking it's ever been in any iteration of her design. I see accurate shadow placement, tons of body definition, perfectly weighty and anatomical animation in the legs. What seems to be the problem here? Now, I will agree that I would have liked an overall rougher look for Motoko, since she is pretty much anime's premier badass chick. I'm not exactly expecting the 90s shoulder pads look to come back, since, you know, the story is supposed to be set in the future, but the messier hair, sterner face, and trademark massive breasts would have been welcome returns. Nonetheless, it's not as though the Major has ever had a consistent design, and for the past half a decade, she's looked like absolute fucking dog shit. If anyone complaining about this new design wasn't five times angrier when the Arise trailers dropped, then I don't want to hear it. Now, I know a lot of people actually like the dumb bullshit she was wearing back in Standalone Complex Season 1, but if you ask me, that's one of the ugliest outfits ever conceived. Season 2 fared much better, even if the leather jacket seemed pretty useless and goofy. The new outfit has shades of that one with the exposed hips, but overall just makes a hell of a lot more sense. It's less iconic, but I don't know if that's in a linearly bad way. I'm sure we're going to see the Major in other outfits anyways, and in fact both of these visuals have her in more interesting outfits. And if this is just what she wears on the job, then it seems perfectly reasonable, though I might miss the skin-tight black outfit from Sack. But again, after having to look at the fucking Arise design for the last seven years, I'm just so fucking happy it's not that. SAC 2045 is being directed and hopefully written by Standalone Complex writer-director Kenji Kamiyama. And if you, like me, think that Standalone Complex is by far the best part of the whole franchise, then this sounds like extremely positive news. Shinji Aramaki is also listed as co-director, and he's been at the forefront of CG anime production for more than two decades, having directed two adaptations of Masamune Shiro's other manga, Appleseed. Granted, I didn't like those, and I think he's not a great director overall, but he definitely makes some pretty-ass CG anime. With Aramaki's involvement, then comes the involvement of studio Sola Digital Arts, which has always been strongly tied to Production IG, and produced a prior Netflix original with them just earlier this year in the form of Ultraman. Now personally, having watched two episodes of that show, there were many elements of the visuals that I disliked, and others that I liked, and if I were to adjust my hype according to what I saw there, I wouldn't get too out of control, but then I'm not one to get hyped about things in general. Do I expect the new Ghost in the Shell to be among the best in the franchise? No. 
well. It would be unreasonable of me to ever expect something to be a masterpiece just because some of the same people worked on it and it's based in the same intellectual property. Do I expect it to be bad? No. Kenji Kamiyama has certainly made some things that I didn't care for, and I don't know anything about the Cyborg 009 films he apparently did a few years back, which I didn't even know about until just now, but he brought Ghost in the Shell to the greatest heights I think it's ever been to for 50 episodes, and I think he can do it for another 24. I've expected Ghost in the Shell to go CG for a long time, and if anything, I'm shocked it's taken this long, and I'm happy that in this trailer we don't see any choppy frame rates or choppy hairdos. I at least am looking forward to it, and I'm surprised at how eager so many seem to be to express displeasure at the first potentially decent Ghost in the Shell media in more than a decade. But hey, I'm sure you'll let me know how you feel about it personally in the comments. While you're down there, open up that description box and go to my Patreon so you can access all my sick bonus content and subscribe for more spicy anime takes. Also, read my light novel! I'm writing volume 2 right now! Get hype!